Wow, the song is really good. I'm glad it's muted. All right, let's continue. So let's say this is my circle. I first you draw the horizontal and the vertical line. All right, that's the first step. Everybody finish that? The horizontal and the vertical line? Yes, Once you've done that now, you're going to take the radius of your circle. Scribe an arc above on this quadrant. Remember, a quadrant is a quarter. So use that radius. Scribe an arc on that quadrant above and below. All right? Those are two points for your circle. Then on the opposite side, use that same radius and do it at, at, at um, D now. So you used A earlier to get this point and this point. Now you're going to use D to get the next point here and the next point over here. Let me repeat that. So using A, we get these two points. And using D, we're going to get two points in, this, in those two quadrants. Here we go. And using B, we're going to get the next two parts. There we go. There we go. And then finally for C, we get the last two points. There we go. And there we go. And guess what you're going to do? Just connect the points through the center. Alright, that's the last step. Let's connect the points quickly. That's the numbering. So you're going to connect them passing through the center. Right? So 7 would match with 1. 2 would match. So, so 7 would match with 1. 2 would match with 6. and vice versa to the next side. Four would match with 10, and then five would match with 11. Everybody understand that? Any questions? Yes. Any questions? All right. So that's why I like to use videos and then explain over it. Because it saves a lot of time through explanations. Here we go. 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 Connect the points to the center. Oops. It's not to the center. One second. Alright, so let's move on now. Once you connect all the points, Right? Your numbering should be accurate because if your numbering is not accurate, you're going to have some faults. So, is everybody finished with the numbering of the circle? Hello? Everybody finished? So, it's going to be P1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You might be saying, sir, isn't P a point? No, P wouldn't be a point because it doesn't fall on one of these lines. Can we move on? Let me quickly show you. For a continue. Oop, I never know how to get this angle. My gosh. Wait one second. There we go. Mm, there we go. So P is not a point, rather, it is a white line that is separate. Alright, let's continue now. Sir. Yes? Same is a different point that's separate but on my line it is it, it's part of the 12 point 
It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Remember, I told you the very first thing to do was to what? Draw a okay. vertical and a horizontal line. Yes, sir. I did that. Um, can you go back to the other video? One second. Oh, wait. You're saying that yours match up based on the angle that you draw, right? Like, for example, this line passes directly to the 12th point? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, because since you're using a 120 degree angle, remember that mine is a sketch, and because mine is not at the angle, it wouldn't have been correct. But if you are doing it precisely, it would perfectly match up. Understand? Sorry about that. Alright. Yeah, so you should directly pass through because yours matches to the 120 degree angle. Sir, could you send a picture of the circle and its label thing, the one that you draw in the group, please? Alright, sure. Let me show you on the group. Where's my phone? Okay, here we go. So, if yours, if yours, if yours is correct, your 12th point should be P. Alright? Your 12th point should be P. Second. Alright, we really need to get a move on. Oops, wrong group. One second. Um, senior three. Here we go. Alright, so your 12 point should be P as long as your 120 degree is accurate. Alright? Now, to get to the point now, we're going to move on to that next section. Right, so Isaac, here's what I was saying a while ago. You see that? It does pass this through and call it the first point P. My bad. Everybody see that? So, right, so if yours is lined up correctly, your 12th tel- your point should be P. Let me quickly take attendance. Alright, can we continue now? Is everybody the same pace? Yes, sir. Alright. Now, you might realize that here is being numbered. And what do you think we're going to do? Same step as before. We're going to find out the angle division of 120 divided by 12 which is going to be 12 to 12 plus 1 so each angle is 10 degrees so what i want you to do you're going to mark off 10 degrees with your protractor all right every 10 degrees you're going to mark off here one two three four five six seven 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Clear? That should take you like a minute, so let me give you a minute to complete that. So mark off 10 degrees going on your curve to ensure that you get the, the accurate line division. Angle division, right? That is. It's 2 p.m. Please wait for your angle of the day. Want to go for a walk? No, thank you. So there we go. And you're going to draw the lines straight throughout. Right. So here's why I haven't told you to connect each point and draw it to the curve. Because I don't want you to confuse yourselves as yet. Right? I should confuse you. <laughs> so what you're going to do is only have the center line passing through. Right? And then now when you draw the lines at each intersection of those lines, it's going to be C1 to C12. So that's C2, C3, C4, C5, all the way down to C12. Wait, can you put that for me? Can we use a protractor? Yes, yes, you should. 
I said use a protractor. It's, it's going to be very difficult for you to bisect down to 10 degrees for every single one. Alright, to, to save time, use a protractor to measure off 10 degrees each time. All right. Sir, could you please go back to the screen share for the labeling and stuff? Sure. All right, so I'm going to give you roughly one minute to finish the labeling. Okay, Google. Start a one minute timer. One minute, starting now. Okay, Google. Raise volume to 10. All right. Good. 50 seconds. Here we go. That's the timer. Okay, Google, stop timer. Let's continue now. So, is everybody finished with the labeling? Maybe 30 more seconds. All right. Okay, Google. Start a 30 second timer. 30 seconds. Starting now. In the meanwhile, um, we can definitely just have a little conversation. How are you guys doing in your other subjects? I hear you guys are struggling very hard. Is that true? Teachers have been telling me that everybody has been failing, nobody has been attending. I just want to know if that's true. Can you can you guys confirm? Cameron, Christoph, Shirag, Arshita, how are you guys doing in your classes? Good. <laughs> Wait, so they, they said we're failing? Yeah, every single teacher said, oh my god, nobody attends. I'm just kidding. Okay, Google, stop timer. Let's continue. Okay, Google. Stop timer. All right, let's continue now. So you guys are passing your classes, I'm sure. All right. The next thing. Wait, sir. Yes. Yes, I installed it. So when you guys get back to school, you'd see Google standing in a corner waiting for you to give commands. Alright? I, I can just say his name and he'll answer and answer any question I have. Wait, sir, is it like a speaker, like an Alexa? Yeah, basically. Wow. Yeah, so it'll answer any questions you have, tell you the time, do math problems for you, everything. So it saves a lot of time. Alright, and it can also give me reminders for students, like... Um, I could just do things in advance. All right. So the next thing that we have to focus on is going to be getting the curves now. All right. So what I want you to do: open your compass to point eleven, and as you can realize, point eleven would match up to one. So those would share the same point, so same curve rather. All right. But just like the it, it, epicycloid, I don't want you to confuse yourself. So take your time. Do the first curve, all right? And try to get the two points for 11 and 1. Does that make sense? So you can do it one circle at a time. So instead of drawing the entire circle, what I want you to do is to use the, cur the, the arc instead. Because using the curve from the entire circle is, does get confusing. It does get confusing having 12 circles in this one space. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to practice using arcs. So look at this one, everybody. Pause for a second. Look at this. Using center point one. Using center point one right here. It's not playing. One second. There we go. Using the radius of the, of the rolling circle, going to center point one. 
I'm going to scribe an arc on the first curve. Do that for me. We're going to go step by step. Alright, go to the center point one, draw the first curve. Center point two, go to the second curve. Wherever it touches the second curve, that's your point. Any questions so far? Am I going too fast? No, sir. Okay, cool. Cool. Thank you for responding. I appreciate that. You know, what's the radius? The radius is going to be the radius of the rolling circle. Oh, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had this idea. I'm not sure if it works, but what if I played studying music in the background of the classes? Do you guys listen to, the, to those type of music like piano music or gibili music? You know what that is? Play what, like, oh God! Never mind, never mind. I had a good idea, and you ruined it. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. All right, so use the radius, but I'm gonna think about it because when I was going through school, I was a piano nerd. I know every piano song, so and that helped me to study a lot. All right, so I'm gonna think about it and see if I could find a little background music to make Google Play to help you focus. Alright, so using the radius, go to each C, 1, C, 2, and draw the line on the curve. How far are you guys now? Did you guys reach to C2 yet? No, sir. Alright, let me give you a moment. No, wrong if the arc doesn't fall on the Wait, can you repeat that for me? Okay, see, um, my center point is C1, right? Same way, and I'm using the same radius as the rolling circle. But the, the arc doesn't fall on P and where P and 11 intersect. Okay, where does it fall? Like above here? Um, yeah, right there. Wait, let me show you. If it falls there, that's fine. It doesn't really affect your curve itself. Because you remember, um, there might be a little bit difference in terms of your human error. You might have made a slight mistake. Right, that's why you're a little bit further up. But let me see it when, once you're finished and I'll let you know. Oh, okay. Okay, Google. Play Ludwig Göransson. Here's a Spotify station featuring Ludwig Göransson. Yes. Let me test the idea. That's C1. Play WAP. We can't be that? Play sir. <laughs> C2 now. Right. Okay, Google Pause. Yeah, my bad. That was a bit too low. Alright, let's continue. Any questions so far? So did you guys get C2? C2 now, same radius, you're going to go to the second curve, and there you go. I think I missed a bunch of steps, what I'm doing right now. Wait, wait, can you put that for me? I just finished putting in the 12, 12 circle line, 12 divisions. Oh, okay, okay. Alright, let me go back a little bit then. So, right there. That's where you're at? Oh, I finished. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I finished putting the line. Okay, so you finished that? Yes. Alright, now follow with me. You're going to now identify. Oops. Okay, Google. Raise volume by 5%. Alright, let's quickly continue now. We're at the last stage. 
We're at the last stage. Quickly, let's continue. Right? So using the intersection of where the line passes through, that's going to be C1. Where it touches the curve of C and touches the line 1, that's going to be C1. Does everybody see that? I need to make sure you understand where I got that from. Right, you're going to repeat this process for all 12 coordinates. Going to draw the lines through. Wow, everybody's camera's off. Camera's off from everybody. There we go, there we go. Quickly, we're almost finished, guys. We're almost finished. So what point coordinate are you at? Are you at C1 still or C3? Sir, can you start back from C1? Sure, let me go back. So C1 is an intersection of the line 1 to 0 and the curve C. When those two intersect, that is C1 right here. Now once we get C1, we'll get all the other points, but I want you to focus on how we get the curve for C1 up here. Look at what we did. We said using the radius of C to 10 or C to the, the, the circumference of the circle, we go to point C1. Alright? Look at that. Using the radius, we go to C1. There we go, and we scribe an arc on the 11th and 1 line, because that line is the first line, technically. Why? Because it passes through the first 1 coordinate. Alright? Does everybody understand how I got that? It passes through the first coordinate, which is 1. Let's continue. C2 is the second coordinate, which is the second curve. So we're going to pass the, the, the arc through that second line. C3 is the second, is the third curve. We're going to make sure it passes through the third curve, which is 3 and 9. Where it passes through, that's our third arc. We're going to repeat this process now for 4, for 5, for 6. For 8, for 9, for 10, 11, 12. And once you finish, you draw your curve throughout. You might be saying, Sir, when I'm at 6, how do I get 7? Remember, 6 is here. You're going to go back up to 5, which is represented by the same curve for 7. Right? 8 and 4 share the same line. So you're going to go back up up to that eighth line to that fourth line rather to get to the eighth point let's prove it if you were to trace this eighth curve all the way back that would have given you the fourth curve as well does everybody see that the fourth arc and the eighth arc all rest on the same line right the first arc right here and the eleventh arc all rest on the same line here you go this is the 11th arc and this is the first arc all the way up here right does everybody see that yes all right so that is the end of this drawing i'm going to post a picture in the group so you can definitely get a reference if you need any more assistance how do you get the red line? Where can How do you get the red line? The red line is a connection of all the points. Right? So once you finish getting the points for C1 all the way to 12, right, you're going to draw the lines through now from P, connecting to the lines slowly, passing through to 6, continuing back to 12. You see that? Why is it still there? Okay, good. And oh, we use the radius of the original circle. Yes, we use the radius of the rolling circle. 
all right so quickly guys finish that up for me i'm gonna still be online so you can pest me all you want if you want to all right wait can you repeat that for me hey. he played the video oh we played the video for you yes sir all right sure one second Oh, okay, okay, okay. Here you go. So, those are all the points. There you go. One second. There we go. So, that's five, that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then we pass it through the curve. Right, so we started off with a cycloid and now we've gone to the advanced point which is the last topic and we call it the hypocycloid. Alright, so I'm going to play the video one more time from there just to make sure you understand the points. So for those who probably think, sir, um, I think I need a French curve, right? Let me explain something for you. A French curve, yes, it would have helped you to get a perfect um, um, spline. We call it a spline. So this line that you see that pass through the red, we call it a spline. That music in the background is really good. We call it a spline. Alright? The French curve would have helped you get it, but once you reach the senior 4, we're going to be using AutoCAD, which is on your computer. So you don't need to buy a French curve as yet. I wouldn't want your parents to spend that money and you're not going to use it next year clear on that all right so, so when you do so when all of you come back in senior four because i expect everybody to come back i have the high hopes for that all right that is when i'll teach you how to use autocad and before you go i can i promise you guys i'll show you how autocad looks so let me just quickly log into autocad for you and show you how it looks so, Pause for a second. Let me show you how AutoCAD, AutoCAD looks. So you can download AutoCAD or you can use it in your browser. I'm using it in my browser right, to save space. All right, let me load up AutoCAD. There you go. I'm going to go full screen. So it is a software like Microsoft Word, for example. Right? It's loading up. Right, so here you go. This is AutoCAD, guys. If I want to draw lines in AutoCAD, I just type the command L. One second. If I want to, to draw a line in AutoCAD, I type the command L I N E. I draw a line. There I go. There I go. There I go. If I want to draw shapes, you remember when you guys had to learn how to draw a hexagon? Yes, sir. Watch this. I'm going to type polygon. I'm going to type six sides. And I'm going to type circumscribe. There's my hexagon. How do you guys feel? 32 minutes of work replaced by 3 seconds of commands. <laughs> That's the power of AutoCAD. Learning about the paper and writing first. But imagine if I gave you this software at the beginning of Scene 3. Do you really think you would have understand what angles are and how to get the different um, perspective of drawings? It would be very impossible for me to just introduce this as the first thing. You wouldn't appreciate TD in itself. Because say for example, I could draw isometric drawings. Remember that we are doing isometric drawings? Look at this one now, quickly. I can draw real world drawings in AutoCAD by just simply drawing a line at an angle right so here's a little cube how could you get to have accepted and really understood what the difference between 3D and 2D is 
if I didn't give you paper first? Because look at that. Do you think you could have appreciated this lovely little 3D object and know the difference between 2D and 3D if I just gave you the software first? It'd be hard. So that's why we make sure you understand at least a year of drawing on paper first before we introduce the system for, to you. Clear now, everybody? All right, so just finish up the hypercycloid for me, okay? And then now, um, the next topic we're gonna be looking at is going to be still on, on the loci, but we're gonna re be reviewing Archimedean Spiral for those who weren't here at that class. We did it early in March, Archimedean Spiral. We're gonna be going over that, all right? So see you guys next class. Any questions you have, just let me know in WhatsApp. Take care, have a great day.